On March 20, 1995, at 7 a.m., five members of Om Shinrikyo calmly stepped onto the Tokyo subway. They each brought with them a plastic bag filled with a mysterious liquid and an umbrella with a special pointed tip. The men pierced the bag with the umbrella, causing the liquid to leak out. A liquid that, when in contact with oxygen, turns into the deadly nerve gas, sarin. It was the deadliest act of domestic terrorism in Japanese history, killing 13 people and injuring thousands more. Welcome to the ABCs of cults. There are thousands and thousands of cults all over the world, and in this little series, we're going to be going through them from A to Z, starting with A. A is for Om Shin Rikyo. It's a name closely associated with one of the deadliest terrorist attacks in human history. But beyond the headlines, who were Om Shinrikyo and what did they believe in? Om Shinrikyo was founded by Shoko Asahara in 1984. It was a religious doomsday cult that mixed elements of Hinduism, Buddhism and Christianity. It started as what appeared to be a harmless new religion, even having its own cutesy anime series. <laughs> Asahara claimed that he was a spiritual leader that could save his followers from the end of the world. He preached a message of love, peace and harmony, but he also had a darker side. Not only did he predict the end of the world, but he had decided that Om Shinrikyo would be the ones who would bring it about. He said that Om Shinrikyo would be the catalyst for World War III. Shoko Asahara was born as Chizuo Matsumoto. He had infantile glaucoma from birth, which made him lose all sight in his left eye and go partially blind in his right eye at a very young age. He was then enrolled in a school for the blind. Asahara was known to be a bully at the school. He would take advantage of the other kids by beating them and even extorting them for money. He graduated in 1970 and turned to the study of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine, which were common careers for the blind in Japan. Four years later, he would be convicted of practicing pharmacy without a license. He received a hefty fine of 200,000 yen. Asahara's interest in religion reportedly started at this time, and he created his own religious group called Om Shinrikyo and then he tried to apply for government registration. Cool experts and government officials advised that they deny this request for government registration, but they did not listen. And they granted Om Shinrikyo legal recognition as a religious corporation in 1989. During this time, the group had already turned to murder within itself. In 1988, a young member died after being forced to hang by his feet from a tree. This is a ritual that only really experienced yoga practitioners would do, and this member died. And Shoko told his followers that he needed to drop his body in order to receive true enlightenment. In reality, they wanted to cover up this death so that nothing would get in the way of them receiving their religious recognition. They cremated his body and one member threatened to go to the police. This member was then strangled and also cremated. And nobody else said anything. And nobody would even know about this until much, much later. Asahara gained credibility by appearing on TV and on magazine covers. He sent pictures of himself apparently levitate into these magazines as proof of his spiritual enlightenment. This levitating, I swear, what? He appeared to be a charismatic, eccentric TV personality. And he had a warm public persona, even taking pictures with the Dalai Lama. But we know now that he's maybe not all he's cracked up to be. Ed, sir. My 
He gradually attained a following of believers and began being invited to lecture meetings at universities. Asahara also wrote several religious books, including Beyond Life and Death and Supreme Initiation. The doctrine of Aum Shinrikyo is based on principles from Buddhism, Hinduism and Christianity. In 1992, Asahara said that he was Jesus Christ. He said that he was Japan's only fully enlightened master. He told his followers that his mission was to take the sins of others upon himself. And he even claimed that he could transfer spiritual power to his members. To prove his supernatural ability, he would show pictures of himself levitating again to his followers. You know, he can only do it for three seconds at the minute, but he's working on it. He said he, he was getting longer every time. Some BS. You know what? I'm going to put in a picture of me levitating right here. Easy. <laughs> This picture was critiqued by many, but sadly, some people did believe him. He ran well-received yoga classes, and he would preach that a nuclear war was coming, and only the enlightened few would survive. He was fascinated with science fiction and conspiracy theories, but knew little of religious scripture, employing a ghostwriter to help take elements from the Bible and Buddhism to create his very own doctrine. Parents of members that joined this group were concerned, as members were made to cut contact with the outside world and give all of their time to the group. Members would give Shoko 10,000 a month for special access to this crazy headgear that they would put on that would allow Shoko to, to transfer his brainwaves over to his members. One ritual demanded that they allowed themselves to be buried underground in a small locked box with only enough oxygen to survive. And they could be in there for up to 24 hours. In 1990, Shoko would run for the House of Representatives in Japan. He had no background in politics, but he was a well-known TV personality. Nobody took him seriously, which would lead him to start a campaign saying that the election was rigged. He declared many conspiracies about how the election was rigged. And this is all starting to sound a bit too familiar, I don't know. After this political failure, he would declare to his followers that all non-believers must die. This is what would eventually lead to the attacks on the Tokyo subway. On March 20th, 1995, the elite inner core of Aum Shinrikyo carried out a series of coordinated attacks in Tokyo, Japan, using the deadly nerve gas sarin. It was the deadliest act of domestic terrorism in Japanese history, killing 13 people and injuring thousands more. What is so scary about this attack is that it wasn't even the main one that they were planning. They had stockpiled chemical and biological weapons, and they had tried to get nuclear ones as well. The attack on the subway was actually an improvised response to the news that there was a police raid on the way. In fact, their planned release of sarin gas was scheduled for some months later. Asahara had originally wanted to make 70 tons of sarin. They had bought a helicopter and sent one of their members to America to learn how to fly it so they could dispense the gas from the skies over Tokyo. This could have killed people in the hundreds of thousands or even millions. And this was to be their means of starting World War III and thereby initiating Armageddon and the end of the world. This attack shocked the world and drew attention to Aum Shinrikyo and their dangerous beliefs. Asahara and several of his top followers were convicted of murder and terrorism and eventually sentenced to death. Asahara was sentenced to death in 2004 and in June 2012, his execution was postponed due to further arrests of other Aum Shinrikyo members. He was ultimately executed on July 6, 2018. Today, Aum Shinrikyo is no longer active, but their legacy lives on. Their actions and beliefs serve as a cautionary tale, a 
as to what can happen when people blindly follow a charismatic leader and his dangerous ideology. I hope you have enjoyed this first episode of the ABCs of Cult. Next week, we are moving on to the letter B. And this is a cult where the leader tried to convince loads of his members to get plastic surgery. What the fuck? Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.